from around the world, this is the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Audio drama in the age of Arthur. TheTableRound.com Good master elders of Cornwall promised silence a happy fall from valiant knight to queenly maid, changed a spindle for a blade. But that fate was far too quick. Joy is not a three-day trick. So let Maldwit show you all. You've never heard from old Cornwall. Bring forth the condemned. Maltweet the fool, for your horrible crimes, I, Arthur, King of the Britons, Sentence you to death. Headsman, do thy gruesome work. Oh, Gawain, I can't believe the minstrel would commit such a crime. This is dreadful. Oh, it is indeed, Sir Hector. Poor Malduit, I'll miss him so. Let justice be done as the heavens fall. Good riddance, I say. Yes, that's me. Malduit, the charming and clever jester, kneeling there ready to get my head chopped off. You're probably wondering how this all came to pass. Well, let me tell you. The Immortal Legends of the Table Round Chapter 27 The Romance of Silence The Romance of Silence! Do you mind? Twas a warm day in the halls of Camelot, not long before luncheon, when a chain of events, both tragic and comic, forever changed the life of the kingdom's favorite fool. <laughs> well, how Excuse me. Pardon me. Oh, good day, Sir Pleo Barris. You've shaved your beard! What? I've never had a beard. And Sir Bleobaris, you've changed your coat of arms. How peculiar. Maldwee, go away. Are you in a sour humor because you've gained weight, Sir Bleobaris? I'm not Bleobaris, I'm Sir Ector. Why, Sir Bleobaris? You changed your name too? Gah! Will you stop, Sir Bleobaris, indeed. And I haven't gained weight. Why Arthur keeps that fool around is beyond me. Sir Tristan, when did you arrive at Camelot? Late last night, Lancelot. Bring in the taxes and tithes from Cornwall. Your Uncle Mark is wise to trust you. And I am happy to have you back. Well, I shan't be here long. No, mes me, you must stay. The court misses its finest swordsmen. You and I both know not one word in that sentence is true. But I leave in the morning. Get not, King Mark. Be without his nephew for a fortnight. You deserve the company and camaraderie of your brothers at the round table. You wouldn't understand the camaraderie I seek. Ah, ah. She must be beautiful. <sighs> ah, hair of gold and skin of cream. To be away from her is pain unimaginable. You couldn't even begin to understand, Lancelot. Underneath that steel armor, you're made of marble. <laughs> we. I am certain I could never understand a love like you do, Tristan. So come to the tilting field with me, and let us practice until we are exhausted, and then let us go revel until we collapse as brothers in arms are. <laughs> That's why you're my favorite, Lancelot. Greetings, Gawain! Malduit, there you are. 
Who's that woman over there talking to the king? I've never seen her. That's a nun. You can tell by the black habit. The other one, you daft fool. That's the Duchess Euphine. And she is... Minor nobility. Niece of the current king of Norway. Is she married? Oh, honestly, where is your head sometimes? No. She's a great beauty. Lush, like a overripe fruit. That corset is overworked. You're a poet, Gwen, but don't get any ideas. Ever since she showed up, that nun hasn't left her side. Ugly crone, isn't she? Face like a rusted axe blade. She's, uh, a very handsome woman. But I suppose we must respect propriety, or at least the appearance of it. Appearances, yes. Hush, they're coming this way. You, sir, I'd know anywhere. The great Sir Gawain. Your reputation for courage and courtesy reaches as far north as Norway. And Lady Euphime, word of your beauty stretches even to fair Camelot. And greeting, sister. Good day, Sir Gawain. Come, lady, we must be off to the chapel for lords. Of course, blessed sister. Then I bid you good day. Sir Tristan, welcome home. Wait for me. Good day, sir. Ah, master fool. Tis Maldweed, my lady. How may I aid thee? After supper, we wish to take rest by the river. Would you attend to us? As you are a guest of King Arthur, I am at your command. Lovely day, Lady Euphine. Birds singing. Foxes running. Clouds, well, that cloud looks like a duck. Greetings, Maldweed. Thank you for attending to me. It is my duty, my lady. Uh, would you care for a song? Perhaps I could juggle for you. You do seem to have the most delicate hands. Oh, no, ma'am. They are calloused and willowy from playing the lute, and rough from juggling rocks, and cold and clammy from, uh, uh scouring pots so often. Mm, of course. Sit next to me in the moss. It is soft and the sun is warm. Many thanks. So, where is that nun who is always with you? Probably at prayer or something. Sent away far from here. Not important right now, dear, dear Maltweet. We are all alone. Come closer. Uh... Your skin is so soft. Did, did you know Sir Kay once slew the king of... Shh. You smell nice for a man. What's your secret? Well, uh... Secret? <laughs> all the women at court must be mad for you, you striking rogue. Oh! My loot! Forget your lute. Take me in your arms. I will be your instrument. Eek! Make music with me. The song of love. Uh, uh, I must go. Someone is calling me. That is my heart you hear calling. Give me your hand. Feel my heart. Mm. That's not your heart. Mm. Ah, good day, my lady. No, sit back down. No, I think it's the king. Arthur calls. I must obey. I must fly. Don't go. You can't leave me like this. Sorry. I'm coming, my king. Flee to the deer I speed to you. Come back here. No one rejects me, fool. You'll pay for this, jester. You'll be sorry. My king, Lady Vivian, you summoned me? Maldwit, you have not been summoned for your vocation. Put down your harp. Yes, sire.
And your pipes. Yes, sire. Stop, man. This is serious. Wait, is that a hurdy-gurdy? Where did you... Maldwit, there is a charge made against you. A charge? Yes, of the most serious nature. For what, sire? Gawain, bring in the accuser. Aye, uncle. That is him, your highness. That is the vile man who did this. There, there, my lady. Calm down. He can't hurt you any more. Lady Euphime. Look at him! He's a beast! He ravished me! I did no such thing! By the river! I found my lady weeping, her dress torn! He snuck up on her in the reeds! He was mad with lust! I will tell you how vile he was! Take vengeance on this man immediately! I don't believe her. Maldwitz is a fine man. In the castle of the Green Knight, Is he... my honor being attacked? Is my word worth less than this mummer? He had his way with me! His way! Silence! Maldwit, you deny these charges? Completely. So you claim the lady... um... willfully... Nay, sire. Nothing happened. I merely came upon her alone on the shore and broke my loot, and then I skipped away. She had said she wanted to meet me there. Lies! Then who tore my dress and left me in a state? Filthy lies! I found her with her dress torn! Hold your tongue! May I speak? Lady Vivian, of course, your wisdom is valued. The fool says one thing and the lady says another. For such a serious matter, it would be of use to have another witness. Might I suggest we seek to employ the powers of the Archdruid Merlin? You had told me Merlin went mad and was hiding in a cave somewhere. I think I can bring him back. How? I have a plan I've been thinking on for a long time. It might work. Lord Arthur, if a humble fool like I am found guilty of such a crime... What is the penalty? Death. Then please, grant me a chance to go and find Merlin with the Lady Vivian. Maldwit, I hereby commit you into the custody of Lady Vivian. She can turn you into a rock or something if you try to escape. How soon can you return with Merlin? Give us until sunrise tomorrow. Done. Thank you, Gwen. Come, Maldwit. It will be a long journey and we must be swift. And first we must stop in the kitchens for three special dishes. It doesn't matter. It is a fool's errand. It is known that only a woman's tricks may ever ensnare Merlin Emrys. A woman's tricks? Perhaps they should have sent you. Does Lord Merlin become a wild man often? Enough to be vexing. Personally, I think it has more to do with him taxing his mind with too many maths and star charts and texts. He really wasn't born for that sort of thing. But surely all his training and years of practice must have shaped his mind to handle that sort of knowledge. Well, Maldwit, why don't you ask him yourself? There he is on all fours. Goodness gracious. Is he eating grass? Yes. Well, I'm glad Sir Kay prepared this meal for him. One smell of this and I'd want to stop crawling in the mud and eating grass too. Do as I described to you. Lay out the three dishes. Nearest to him, the roast beef. Then a bit further, the milk and honey. And lastly, the goblet of wine. Beef? And milk and honey. And now wine. These three dishes should pull him, like a child being born, step by step back to his finer self. Let's hope this works, and his better nature wins out. Alas, alas. Oh, was that you, Sir Nature? 
Whatever I work for and accomplish, nature deprives me of it in a single day. Hmm. Well, yes. Merlin, but... you've been nurtured in these woods for a long time. Certainly long enough that you should have forgotten your human nature. And should have wanted to continue eating herbs the way you're used to. Nurture makes a good point. Oh, Nurture. By the gods, you have given me much trouble. Because of you, many a good man has been brought low. Nature also makes a very good point. Mm-hmm. Who is he talking to? I have no idea. Not I. You do it more than I do, Nature. If a man has a noble body but a vile heart, what can I do about it if he chooses to act dishonorably? Neither he nor I can do anything about it. Only nature, who made him that way, can. You are very wrong to attack me like this, nature. For every man made evil by nurture, there are a thousand men made evil by nature. Don't forget nature. It was because of you that men first fell. Adam was the first father, and Eve the first mother. There was no one in existence to teach them transgression. It was through their nature that they learned to sin and deceive and lie to the Lord, their God. All that is the fault of you, nature, not I. Oh, he's got you there, Elagogo, representation of nature. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> nature, as God well knows, you have given me trouble and opposed nature ever since man first sinned by eating that apple. For man was created in God's image. There was nothing in his nature that would have caused him to be evil. For it is not like God to do evil. <laughs> so, why don't you give up this argument, Nurture? Let poor Merlin give in to his nature. <laughs> Sorry, Nurture, but nature makes a good point. I think I'm going to eat the roast. Very well. Suit yourself, Merlin. You'll be back. Eat up, darling. Eat up. Eat. Eat, Merlin. Eat up. Mm. Oh, yes, yes, that's good. Is that coriander? Mm. Oh, honey milk. Uh. Merlin? Mm. Ah. Merlin. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And this is good wine. I know wine, for I am Merlin, sage of quicksilver and brimstone who's to the barn. The high peak is lie on a scent to her is a bosom. So how did you see through my disguise, Vivian? Hmm? You're not in disguise, Merlin. You're just filthy and completely naked. Oh, goodness. Oh. <laughs> and I suppose the physical personification of the abstract concepts of nature and nurture weren't in fact here either. No, just the three of us. Oh, pity. We were having such an interesting conversation about the effects of environment versus heredity. Oh, well, then why do I put up with you, dear God? <sighs> Maldwit, give him your cloak. Aye, my lady. Here. Take it. Oh, yes. Thank you. This is much better. So, how long have I been here? Too long. I'm sorry. It's good to see you. You as well, dear one. I beg your pardon, great wizards, but I'm going to be executed soon. May we hurry back? We're playing the hurdy-gurdy. Oh, it's a long story. Well, come, darling, we'll catch you up on the way. There's the city walls. Hurry, we best not try the king's patience. Beg your pardon, my lord. Well, why are you carrying those shoes? Merlin, come. No, 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 I want to know. Goodman, why are you carrying those lovely shoes? Oh, these? <laughs> well, my lord, look at the boots I'm wearing on my feet. Not much left of them. Hmm, yes. 
Your toes are sticking out, and no heel to speak of. And it's that I haven't rightly been able to afford new shoes in many years. But I saved up after a good harvest or two, visited the cobbler in the village, and finally have these. Wouldn't they serve you better on your feet? I'm sure they would, but I want to show them to my wife just once, before they get mud on them. I've never had good, solid shoes before. She'll be very proud of you. (coughs) Oh, thank you, (coughs) Milady. <laughs> Merlin, that was rude. <laughs> he is. He is. It probably was. <laughs> Merlin, stop gawking at everything. We're almost at the castle. Arms. Arms for the poor. Arms in the name of God. <laughs> Can you spare a few coins, good lady? I haven't (laughs) eaten in days. Merlin, be decent. Here you go, neighbor. Bless you, sir. (laughs) Hush! There's a funeral going on inside the church. Very sad. A little boy died. The boy's father be the neighborhood cobbler. Heartbroken he is. <laughs> Show some respect, <laughs> sir. Come on, Merlin. We'll enter the castle through that servant's door. We don't want to cause a commotion. And this is where we part ways. I do not wish to see how this plays out. Malduit, be strong, dear Frupiak. And Merlin, my dear heart, when this is all over, come to my chambers. Arthur, noble and just king of most worship, I bring to you Merlin the Enchanter. Maldry! Merlin! Merlin, old friend! Tis still too late for you, wicked... Fool! (laughs) Friend Merlin, where have you been? I've been worried sick. (laughs) What is it? Are you all right? (laughs) The druid has plainly gone mad. What is the point of this? Uh, Merlin, why uh, are you laughing? uh, uh, What was that? Uh, uh, why am I laughing? Uh, I'm laughing. Yes. yes. How, how are you not laughing? <laughs> I am laughing because it's all so, so dreadfully funny. <laughs> oh my. That was, that was a man. Oh, the poor man carrying his shoes with such pride. He wanted to show his wife and she's never to see them. He's never to wear them. I have reason to laugh because he drowned crossing the stream back to his home. Slip. Fall, splash, dead. <laughs> Marilyn, calm yourself. <laughs> and the beggar, the beggar in filth in front of the abbey. Oh, I had good reason to laugh. Alms, alms in the name of God. <laughs> oh, he, he was hungry. Why can't you see how funny that is? He's begging for a copper coin. Cold, sick, filthy. <laughs> Miserable, asking so little, and just a foot or two beneath him in the mud is a small fortune of lost Roman coins. <laughs> Merlin, are you all right? <laughs> and oh, and the funeral. Oh, it's no wonder I laughed. Oh, oh, I can hardly breathe. You see, all oh, there was a funeral for a little boy. <laughs> and the priest was chanting, and this man, he was weeping that he lost his son, <laughs> and he was crying his eyes out, and so, oh, he doesn't even, <laughs> and the boy wasn't his, he didn't know, the real father was the priest giving the service, he didn't know either. <laughs> Arthur. Tell your pet wizard to get a hold of himself. (laughs) This display is a disgrace. Indeed, my lady. 
We should go. <laughs> oh, stop. Stop. Don't you dare leave because that's not even the best part. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is the funniest. Blessed holy sister. Come here. <laughs> um, You're going to want to hear this. Sure. Oh, look at this nun. This devout bride of Christ is actually... Unhand me, <laughs> sir. <laughs> the Queen Ephim's secret lover. <laughs> She's not, in fact, a very ugly woman. He is, in fact, a man of middling attractiveness. Oh, Gora. <laughs> Why, sir, you can... Uh, um... Please. Well... Uh, uh, yes. You have me there. I am a man. You're a clever one, Merlin. <clears throat> This is a disgrace. Gawain, take this man and throw him in the dungeon. But first get him something appropriate to wear. We can't have it said I'm imprisoning nuns. Come on, you, you filthy deceiving blackguard. Uh, hmm. I, I told you that this was not going to work. I did tell you. Well, that came out of nowhere. Yes. But I'm afraid we still have the matter of the charges against you, Maldweet. Queen Euphemes lax morals don't supplant her accusations. Yes, fool. You still must pay for what you did to me. I demand justice, King Arthur. <laughs> Queen Euphemie, you say Maldweet here forced himself on you. He dishonored you? These are your snide insinuations? Yes. He used his male strength to know you, to have relations with you. Yes. Yes. Connolly? Merlin, be decent, man. We all know what it means. Really? <laughs> Honestly, have I taken some kind of potion of madness here? No one else sees this? What are you talking about? I find your tale a bit hard to believe, because... Merlin, please. Sorry, child, there's no other way. Because Maldwit the Fool is plainly a woman. What? That's impossible. <laughs> oh, my. Stop. All of you, just stop. Someone explain this to me. I'll explain, sire. I mean... Please allow me to explain, sire. <gasps> oh! Uh, go on. My name was... Is... Silencia. I was born in Norway, where by law a woman may never inherit property. My father was a knight, and had a healthy yearly allowance from the crown, but our land was poor and our prospects few, so when I was born a girl, they announced I had been born a boy, and sent me to an isolated manor with the midwife and her husband, a trusted chamberlain to be raised alone, so as not to threaten the inheritance. Safely out of sight. Thus, I was brought up deep in the woods, pretending to be a boy. It was a lonely life, until the day a group of wandering minstrels became lost in our woods and met me. They sang of adventure and the wide world and freedoms, and thinking I was a boy, they invited me to run away with them because I sang so well. Well, for a boy. I traveled with them for a long time, and thus I took the name Maldweet, which means... Wrongly raised. Yes, my king. And I went on my own way to seek adventure. And that is how I found my way to your service, where I have been welcomed and found a home and friends and a great many adventures. That is quite a tale. Oh, my. And it is a tale that proves Mald... Lady Silencia's innocence for your disingenuous assertions. Well, yes. 
That does seem to be so. Lady Euphim, I banish you from Britain's shores forever. Yes, gracious King Arthur. And Malduit, you made quite a man. Quite a man indeed. Thank you, Merlin. You saved the day again. Did I? That man is still drowned. The child is still dead. What exactly did I save? You're just a man, Merlin. Or at least you're... Well, you're not a god. This reminds me of the last time I ever saw you. I mean, the first time. Don't I? You seem unwell, old friend. Get some rest. We'll speak on this tomorrow. Break fast with me? We will. Will we? Goodbye, Art. So, <clears throat> Lady Silencia. My noble Lord Arthur. What are we to do here? There's no precedent for this type of thing. As is appropriate. I submit to my lord's will. We'd need to get you far from here, where no one knows you as my fool, as a as a Malduit. I have allies in Ireland, or Norway, perhaps Iberia. I mean, I am technically the emperor of all Rome's dominion. We will find you a suitable match, a husband of good station. How dare you stand preoccupied? You should rejoice to be the bride. At least you have the life you should, the proper rights of maidenhood. And natural order is restored. You're meant for spindles, not for sword. My duty is whatever pleases your majesty. And I will pay any dowry. Silencia, you will be kept in finery and comfort for all of your days. The envy of other women. What fool would choose to be the slave? Trade weak for staunch and meek for brave. No, you cannot think of this. Do not imagine what it is. I shaped you for a greater life than only being someone's wife. I've been raised to comply. I will be content with what my king deems for me. Of course. Unless you... Never mind what others will. They have their own roles to fulfill. Think instead of what you need, what you can't bear to concede, for nature born or nurture grown, the life you lead must be your own. Unless you... My lord? What are you telling me? Would you... You could... Perhaps... Had I a choice, I would rather remain your Maldwit. So be it. Most excellent and magnanimous Arthur, king of all the wide world, I will sing your praises all my days to all who will listen and to those who do not run away fast enough. Glory be to the justice of Camelot. Yes, Maldwit, yes, but let's be discreet about this. We can't Hail just... Hail to Arthur, Maldwit, most we need... noble lord, king and host of the knightly board. Hail, all hail, let the hall resound to the ringing mirth of the table round. Where were you keeping that hurdy girl? Hello, this is Cassie Rilinicki and I played Nature, Nurture and Reason. The 30th century tale The Romance of Silence was written by the otherwise unknown Heldris of Cornwall, which was most likely a pen name. 
The poem contains much that is unusual for the era, including complaints about female inheritance rights and the roles prescribed to women in that day. Given its main topic of a woman disguised as a man, and the inclusion of topics not commonly seen in chivalric romances of the time, such as childbirth, domestic chores and sewing, some have even ventured the guess that Heldress of Cornwall might too be a woman in disguise. Written by Morgan Z. Saw. Ahem. Oh, sorry, please go ahead. Written by Morgan Z. Saw. This chapter featured selections of the poem The Silence of Romance by Lietze, featuring Chandler Walpole as King Arthur, Jackson Trent as Merlin, and Sonny Asadi as Vivian. And me, Carrie Ramsire as Maldweet de Minstrel. Quite. Queen of Fame was played by Gail Bomba. The Nun was Joshua Kibbe. Kessie Rolaniki played Nature, Nurture and Reason. Sir Ector was David Kendall. Also featuring the voice talents of T.J. Lloyd, Dave Morgan. Original music by Nicola Branch. Additional music by Kevin McLeod. Your narrator is Nicola Branch. This is Chris Dietzel, author of the Space Lore series. If you're listening to this, you're a fan of Arthurian legend, just like I am. I've been a fan ever since reading Sir Gawain and the Green Knight in college. Well, now I've created the Space Lore series, a set of books that take aspects of Arthurian legend and turn them into epic space fantasies that have been described as King Arthur meets Star Wars. Each book focuses on an aspect of Arthurian legend, such as the Green Knight, the Excalibur, and the Round Table, and transports the story into a universe filled with aliens and empires. Kirkus Reviews said the Space Lore books are stirring sci-fi action that should appeal to fans who applaud the introduction a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. The Quilting Tangent said they are absolutely wonderful sci-fi adventures, and one of Amazon's top 100 critical reviewers said every part of the books was great, from the world building to the vivid battle scenes to the depth and heart of the central characters. I invite you to check out my Space Lore books today, available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iBooks, and everywhere else books are sold. Thank you. Now, you seem to me to be a connoisseur of the best of radio drama. In which case, make sure you're subscribed to the Monday Matinee Feed. There we have our weekly series of dramatic, theatrical, classic, eclectic, and live radio drama. So, yeah, either the main Mutual Audio Network feed for all types and genres of audio drama, or the Monday Matinee. And we'll see you there. This is the Mutual Audio Network, listening and imagining together.